Hey there, and thank you for joining me on my very first ever, what we're going to be calling Forever and Always reading. This is for anybody who has been guided to this reading. And this isn't um, Zodiac related or anything like that, although that could come up, I, I don't know. <laughs> But this is for anybody who's guided to this reading, They're, this whole entire reading or part of this reading um, is for you. Or else you wouldn't have been guided to click on it and to join me here. And thanks for joining me here on my channel. I appreciate it. I hope that you enjoy this reading. I'm going to be working with a new deck. I'm really into it. It's called Dreams of Gaia Tarot. And it works, um, it's very, it's different, it's very different than regular tarot. Uh, and as far as just the way it's set up, even the Major Arcana has 25 cards. Each suit has, uh, I think, uh, yeah, four, yeah, four, 15, 14 cards. It's just, it's different. It's set up with um, by the elements like like regular tarot, but instead of pages and knights, we have um, we have different different types of of characters that come in um, for the different suits. So we'll see what we get. Just being guided to to shake this up a little bit more. We got two cards so far. We got the uh, the eight of this is the eight of swords. Oh no, the eight of water. Pretty sure this is the eight of water. We'll look it up to make sure. It doesn't say she just has symbols, so I'm still learning. But there is the eight of water, and here is the five. Um, Pretty sure this is five of swords. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I'm still learning this deck. Like I said, I just got it. And um, here's another card. But this one's obvious. This is the five of fire. Most of them are pretty obvious. This is the ace of fire. All the aces are dragons, which is super awesome. Um, but I want to double check here, these first two cards, okay, so yeah, so that is not... Yeah, so this is the Eight of Water, like I said. Clues are those dolphins. He's got the full moon there. It looks like he's, I don't know, it almost looks like he's uh, just like on a ship or something. And then we have the f uh, Five Six. Six, I'm pretty sure this is of air. Yeah, six of air. So we have eight of water, six of air. So we're clear there. Five of fire, ace of fire. Ace of air, I mean, sorry, ace of earth. Ace of Earth. So we have Ace of Fire, Ace of Earth. Wow. And the Mother. So this would be similar to the Empress. This is the Mother card. I'm being told to get three more. We have the three of fire. Uh, 
and the whoa and the sage and one more card here This is the Two of Earth. The Two of Earth. Okay. So, um... I just kind of got this interesting download here. It was like, this is going to be an interesting kind of, because I'm reading this going diagonal and by rows as well. So it's like, I have one, two, three, four, five reads here. Five, six, seven, eight reads here actually. So we have the three rows, we have the diagonals, and then we have the columns. So the way this is going to go first is um, by row. So one, two, three rows, and then diagonal from left to um, I guess you could say left to, to right bottom. So left top to right bottom. So going diagonal that way and then diagonal the other way. So that'd be four and five. And then going from first column, six, second column, seven, and eighth column and third column, <laughs> read eight. So we're going to pause here and I'm going to take a minute to take a look at these different, the different, just spend some time here with these re with the, with the different combinations of cards here. And I will be back with a more, you know, put together, um, kind of understanding of what we're doing here. Cause this is spontaneous to begin with. And then, um, and then it turning into all of a sudden I'm seeing, different things popping up here. Like it's not just supposed to be one reading. It's really interesting the way that I'm seeing this here. So we will be back. So for this first row, this first reading, we have the eight of water and the six of air and the five of fire so what we're getting here is um kind of this new sense of understanding your attitude your energy your perception being a very important part of your experience like you started it, I mean, you've understood this for a while, but you're really like putting that into practice, um, getting probably better at maintaining a certain vibe and frequency and not being so reactive, um, which opens up to understand with this uh, six of air that we have Um, more at our disposal for understanding and for understanding and uh, 
kind of seeing different options, different sides of situations, uh, being able to kind of step back and, and see different perspectives. And so with this five of fire, we have, this is, this is, uh, these are a couple of, of people who are about to get into it and not in a fun way. Um, they're going to fight and, and that's what's going on there. Or it's like, so what I'm getting here is there's been a conflict with somebody. Um, and maybe even there wasn't a whole lot even said, but there was something that happened that just caused this kind of, um, disconnect at best or harsh feelings or separation, um, going on here with this five of fire, just not seeing eye to eye. Um, having emotions that are, having emotions that are definitely, uh, yeah, just not communicate or this is a power struggle. Like you've realized that somebody has maybe been manipulating you or taking you for for granted or advantage or anything like that um but because you're kind of in this really zen place of of feeling abundant being really grateful seeing how your attitude your choices how how you're you know with your chakras how in balance you are and how that maintains your energy and that you do have choices and so in dealing with this or this could be something that's like uh are things weird with this person or what's going on there um and then maybe it's going to come to a head but in any event what i'm getting with this is to recognize that, you know, go back to the choices that you have, because there's more than one option for dealing with this situation. Um, and probably taking a route that's less aggressive is going to be the way to go. Because any kind of confrontation is like what I'm getting with this is kind of like, what's the point? Why do we want to get into the fire? Why do we want to, you know, it's like our guardian angels going like, you know, kind of pulling you back from this, going, you can go there if you want to go there with this person or people, if it's more than one person, it could be isolated events with people, or it could be multiple people in one event or experience or situation relationship. Um, so that is a possibility, but it's really like you you have your choices and remember where your frequency is at, where, what you're thinking really depends on what you're going to get out of this. What's going to be the, the ultimate, um, outcome is really up to you is what I'm getting here with this. So really think about, you know, what you've already been experienced like, Oh, okay. Well, if I, do a good job of, of staying grateful, staying in the moment, thinking with, a, you know, through the, through the eyes of abundance and gratitude and energetic flow, I'll see how there's so many possibilities for dealing or reacting to any given situation. And that conflict or like really getting caught up in somebody else's bullshit, you know, like you, you could be minding your own business and somebody is just like, you're attacking me. And you're like, what are you talking about? Just to, just to have somebody to, to get their frustrations out, you know, I, that's definitely a thing, you know, people definitely do that. They'll, they'll pick apart something that was 
said or not said or whatever, just to have an outlet. And if you, and if you allow yourself to, you know, kind of take the bait and get into that, then, you know, you'll have an outcome that's probably not going to be favorable for you. So sometimes the best, um, <laughs> the very, very best type of, of response is silence or no response or just to really stand your ground. Don't let somebody intimidate you. It's like this tries to come in and mess with this type of energy. Both of these energies are very much in control and in Zen. And this is like two in one going on here. And then this can come along and be like, oh, I want to get your attention. Let's fight. Let's, let's, you know, let's battle. And you can just decide, no, I'm not doing that with you. Or get, or stand your ground, you know, defend yourself and then be done with it. Okay, so that's read number one. We'll get to read number two here in a second. Okay, now we're back with our third reading. We have the Ace of fire here we have the ace of water and we have the mother and so this is a really intense read here with these three cards um this ace of fire is all about um action in beginning so no more contemplation we have that that spider right here telling us that we are um to really get to moving with what we've been thinking about creating so spiders are all about creation and moving and action and getting things done and and um moving forward and so then we have this ace of water so it's like there's a couple of different things going on here with these two aces. What I'm picking up on for you is you've been thinking about creating more, thinking about either starting different projects or just being more creative, getting back, tapping in with your inner child, getting into what feels good to create or thinking about new things to do with what you're already working on. But it's like, how can I diversify? How can I change what I'm doing? And, and um, really extending out more of your creativity. But this is about actually doing it. Like, okay, the time is now. We just had, obviously, the equinox um, on the 20th. Today's the 21st. And, um, so these are like our equinox spring, you know, eternal, um, flipping things over, uh, readings here, but with this ace of, of water, these two are, it's like, oh my God, I love this so much because we have ace of fire, ace of water. And with that, it's like, not only is it new beginnings, but it's, this can very well mean uh, a new beginning in love, passion. It's very fiery. We're, it's start, I mean, the energy starting very soon, very soon. Um, or this can mean that you're just now like something just cracked. Like there's epiphanies, revelations, something like that, where it's like, I figured out, like I figured out I've healed or I've cut cords or what have you to, um, to be able to make room for love in my life, that sort of thing. Like I, or I've done a certain amount of work on myself or my environment, my, my home life. I, you know, I'm happy, I'm content. And, and this would be, an, a, you know, I'd love to share this, this space, this time, whatever with somebody else or people, just people that have the same type of super intense, you know, let's get going kind of passionate energy. 
And remember, you know, kind of opposites attract. We want to have balance here. So I feel real balance. And then what's so great about this is we have the mother coming in afterwards. And she's all about about creation and expectations and new beginnings and unconditional love. So it's like really backing up this with the, with the, um, the ace of water with this unconditional love, new beginnings, um, letting yourself you know, kind of go with the flow and not be afraid of the unknown or of new love and not trusting like all of those negative emotions that can come with new and new beginnings. So it could be about love, It could, but this could just be about you tapping in with yourself, your passions, what you love about life and creating and doing and no more just like thinking about it. Like it's time now. It's time to move forward. It's time to get things going. We have balance here with fire and water and with the mother coming in with this energy. Also, I'm hearing Gaia really strong here, feeling Gaia really strong here in support saying, oh, this is going to make me emotional. <laughs> okay. Let me, she's saying, um, Whatever's coming in for you as a person, as an idea to germinate, to propagate, to impregnate into your life, whether it's a person, a new relationship, whatever's coming in that you're getting inspired to put your energy into is divinely um, timed. It's synchronistic. It's um, either connecting you, it's divine union, she's saying. It's divine union in one way or another. It's connecting you to your soul, you to your soulmates, you to soul family, and you to her, um, her, <laughs> Gaia, connecting you deeper to her because she's she's had a hand with your guides in, in working with you and setting this up behind the scenes. Like maybe you don't really fully recognize all, all of the steps and all of the work to get things into balance and stuff. And not only that, just the timing of where we're at. We just had the equinox and, you know, getting things, getting things into, into a space where we can, you know, really feel into our energies and what's what's good for us, what feels good for us. And so maybe you've been working these last few weeks or months um, on really getting yourself in a position in different ways. Like it's kind of like I'm getting this like, oh gosh, um, preparation, preparation. That's what I'm hearing. She's saying you've been preparing and thinking like there is going to be a time, there is going to be a new space and time for, for me and my life, that sort of thing where things are going to come together, where there's going to be support on a different level, not just from my guides and my guardians, but you know, people in the flesh kind of thing. And you've, you've known that you've had faith in that. So it's kind of like preparing for a party and have that, you know, kind of feeling, but it's also been like, like, okay, so I'm seeing kind of like preparing for, for a gathering, for a party, for people to come together, to, to meet people, to be with them, to have this kind of, or person to have this, but I'm feeling it is like more than one, like there's more than one. And, um, but, but, but ultimately, but this, but it's also been just about you creating a space within you and without you in your space that you that you reside in your space that you live in um, to get into balance, to get into harmony, to connect with you and your soul. It's like above and below, you know, kind of thing and getting into balance. So I see like there's been preparation, 
like um, when I said about the party, like if there's people coming over or you have a date or something like that, you're going to tidy up your house and you're going to clean up and you're going to, you know, just make things to look really nice. So you feel really good about your space. At least most people do do that sort of thing. So there's been like, you know, like on, on a spiritual level preparation, but also on a real like 3D level too, like things changing in your world to that you've been, you know, changing in your world to make preparations for sharing space um, and having um, the support of your guides, your guardians, and ultimately, of course, our great, our great mother Gaia and her coming in and saying that, that there's been preparation on multiple levels here for this. And so please understand that, recognize that, um, and just know, just have faith. I'm hearing faith is what's needed. Trust is what's needed. Action is what's needed. Think about you. If this is about, this is about you. Number one, not about anybody else, you know, necessarily it's about you really thinking about, about yourself and about what you need in your space and um and know that there's this balance that's definitely happening that you're going to be really inspired to do and to create different things and to unite with people um and this very well again this could be about this could be about love this could be about just you tapping back tapping in big time with um with your soul and getting downloads about what you're going to do moving forward and have faith. It's, it's like, don't think about the shoulds. Don't think about like, don't talk yourself out of anything that's coming to you right now, whether it's a person, um, an opportunity, an, an idea, um, something, you know, anything like, don't talk yourself out of the different ways that it may not work out because that's n not where it's this is headed this has the energy of 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 coming into being created and coming into being on a very very spiritual level so your doubts your fears anything like that would just be that's just human based um conditioning and you and if anything like that comes up then you then try to reverse engineer it and figure out where is this coming from why is this here why is it, it triggering me like this what do i need to do about it is this cords i need to cut this is reminding me of a situation what is yet to be healed there so i can release it and be as open as i need to be because that's what's being called of you okay awesome all right we're gonna get into the next one here thank you so much for watching that read i appreciate it all righty let's get going here with our third reading so if you pick this reading we have the three of fire the sage and the two of earth so what we're getting here is that it's time to get going, time to get moving with anything that um, you've been thinking about. This could very well mean actual like travel, movement, that kind of thing, um, or just this has to do with following your, um, your instincts uh, to try something new, to start something new, to explore, to have an adventure, to, this could be very like, I'm going to go camping kind of thing and go explore in the desert or the wilderness, that sort of thing. Um, this could be about a project that you've been thinking about starting and we're going to start a project now. Uh, but whatever this is, this is about actually doing it, getting into action about this project. With the sage coming in with it, it's kind of saying like whatever this project is or endeavor is or new exciting thing that you want to learn or explore or practice. This could even be about like, you know what, I've been thinking about learning how to play the guitar something even musical i'm feeling with this um creative in nature or i used to paint forever ago and i've been really thinking about getting back into it anything like that but i'm seeing with the sage is um that if you combine 
what you know with new and learning learning new things um, with that project or a person coming in to help you as a guide, as a teacher, somebody to learn from. This could be a course to take, a person that you find on YouTube that really inspires you and that you really like their energy and the type of stuff that they do and you're like, yeah, I dig this stuff. Um, whatever that it is, it's like, don't, don't think that, that it's best to just, you know, go out like, all right, I'm going <laughs> or starting and just starting. Like, think about it for a bit. Think about who may be somebody to do this with or find somebody to, um, to help guide you through this. So, uh, so if it is about, um, painting, find somebody online or find a course that you're going to create from beginning to end to really see it through. Um, if it is about learning an instrument, find, you know, find a teacher online, uh, find somebody that you can learn from in some way, but get that going. And then with this, the two of the, of, of earth coming in, um, to round it out here. So we have your three of fire, your sage, and your two of earth. Now, it's interesting because with your, with your three and your two, we have five. And with your sage, we have seven. Um... And so all together there, I don't know why I'm, I'm being told to add it up like that, but it's like, I feel that whatever it is, it's very much, it's very much guided. Um, this two of earth is like, It's almost even kind of magical in this sense, but, but what we need here is kind of like practical, practical with the magical is what I'm hearing here and tapping in with the fae, with nature to help inspire you with whatever that this is. It could be a book, a story, um, your story possibly. There's so many things that are coming through for this. Like I'm really picking up on a lot with this. Like there really, there really is so many options. You see, she's like, she's done. She's doing all this. So there's balance, but then there's also like this thing with abundance here too and guides. So, so I'm really feeling this more like this would be in somebody in the flesh, but let's use our connections with our, with our guides on the other side, with your guardian angel, with archangels, with <clears throat> whoever that you connect to. If you, if you, you know, know who that is or not, it doesn't really matter necessarily at all, um, to be guided because you're going to be moving, you're going, you're, you're, it's like, now it's like the, it's like the, the bell rung or the, you know, the, the, the gun blasted and it's time to go. But, but it's like you getting coaching along the way, being guided with somebody that's going to, you know, really, you know, help you see it through and not procrastinate, not get distracted, you know, have an accountability buddy type of thing, or just somebody that's been there before to like hook up with and be like, Hey, I want to do this project how do you think I should start that? Or do you have any advice for me? And can I check in with you? You know, it can be an informal, um, but don't go it alone, but, but seek, I'm kind of seeing like seek te like tech being a part of it, being a part of this in some way, balancing tech and nature and, um, your inspiration coming from different places here. Very, I want to see this balanced. It's like, this is looking for balance. And the, sa the sage energy is kind of like, you're going to be guided to where to go um, because it feels like this is very much like, like almost like a fool card in the sense of 
there's different like there could this could be like there's so many like you have so many ideas and so many things that you want to do and start that you've just kind of been like I'm not even sure what I want to do so let's pick something and and it's like let's pick something because you need to start moving with your creative juices in one way or another so whatever those things are and to you know map that out and and have maybe somebody that can help you get things done and um or a coach a very or or it could be very formal like seek out healing and seek out a coach to help you through your ascension and through your creative you know process and what's going on but that balance is you know to really look at balancing out your energies and don't let yourself just go 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 without taking time to rest to um, do some self-care, clearing, checking in with your guides regularly, journaling, um, really uh, map, like not only like mapping out where, where you're going to go, but uh, what's the word? Document what's been going on and what's been happening and really kind of honor the process. Okay, there we are for our third read. Thank you so much. If you if this was your choice, I appreciate you being here. And we will get on to the next one, which is going to be the diagonal um, read. Alrighty, let's get going here with our third reading. So if you pick this reading, we have the three of fire, the sage, and the two of earth. So what we're getting here is that it's time to get going, time to get moving with anything that um, you've been thinking about. This could very well mean actual like travel, movement, that kind of thing, um, or just this has to do with following your, um, your instincts uh, to try something new, to start something new, to explore, to have an adventure, to, this could be very like, I'm going to go camping kind of thing and go explore in the desert or the wilderness, that sort of thing. Um, this could be about a project that you've been thinking about starting and we're going to start a project now. Uh, but whatever this is, this is about actually doing it, getting into action about this project. With the sage coming in with it, it's kind of saying like whatever this project is or endeavor is or new, exciting thing that you want to learn or explore or practice. This could even be about like, you know what, I've been thinking about learning how to play the guitar, something even musical I'm feeling with this, um, creative in nature, or I used to paint forever ago, and I've been really thinking about getting back into it, anything like that. But I'm seeing with the sage is um, that if you combine what you know with new and learning, learning new things, um, with that project or a person coming in to help you as a guide, as a teacher, somebody to learn from. This could be a course to take, uh, a person that you find on YouTube that really inspires you and that you really like their energy and the type of stuff that they do. And you're like, yeah, I dig this stuff. Um, whatever that it is, it's like, don't, don't think that that it's best to just, you know, go out like, all right, I'm going <laughs> or starting and just starting. Like, think about it for a bit. Think about who may be somebody to do this with or find somebody to um, to help guide you through this. So, uh, so if it is about um, painting, find somebody online or find a course that you're going to create from beginning to end to really see it through. Um, if it is about learning an instrument, find, you know, find a teacher online, uh, find somebody that you can learn from in some way, but get that going. And then with this, the two of the, of, of earth coming in, um, to round it out here. So we have your three of fire, your sage, 
and your two of earth. Now, it's interesting because with your, with your three and your two, we have five. And with your sage, we have seven. Um, and so all together there, I don't know why I'm, I'm being told to add it up like that, but it's like, I feel that whatever it is, it's very much, it's very much guided. Um, this two of earth is like, it's almost even kind of magical in this sense, but, but what we need here is kind of like practical, practical with the magical is what I'm hearing here and tapping in with the fae, with nature to help inspire you with whatever that this is. It could be a book, a story, um, your story possibly. There's so many things that are coming through for this. Like I'm really picking up on a lot with this. Like there really, there really is so many options. You see, she's like, she's done. She's doing all this. So there's balance, but then there's also like this thing with abundance here too and guides so so i'm really feeling this more like this would be in somebody in the flesh but let's use our connections with our with our guides on the other side with your guardian angel with archangels with <clears throat> whoever that you connect to if you if you you know know who that is or not it doesn't really matter necessarily at all um to be guided because you're gonna be moving you're going you're, you're it's like now it's like the it's like the the bell rung or the you know the 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 gun blasted and it's time to go but but it's like you getting coaching along the way being guided with somebody that's gonna you know really you know help you see it through and not procrastinate not get distracted you know have an accountability buddy type of thing or just somebody that's been there before to like hook up with and be like hey i want to do this project how do you think I should start that? Or do you have any advice for me? And can I check in with you? You know, it can be an informal, um, but don't go it alone. But, but seek, I'm kind of seeing like seek te like tech being a part of it, being a part of this in some way, balancing tech and nature and, um, your inspiration coming from different places here. Very, I want to see this balanced. It's like, this is looking for balance. And the, sa the sage energy is kind of like, you're going to be guided to where to go um, because it feels like this is very much like, like almost like a fool card in the sense of there's different, like there could, this could be like, there's so many, like you have so many ideas and so many things that you want to do and start that you've just kind of been like, I'm not even sure what I want to do. So let's pick something. And, and it's like, let's pick something because you need to start moving with your creative juices in one way or another. So whatever those things are and to, you know, map that out and, and have maybe somebody that can help you get things done and, um, or a coach a very, or, or it could be very formal, like seek out healing and seek out a coach to help you through your ascension and through your creative, you know, process and what's going on. But that balance is, you know, to really look at balancing out your energies and don't let yourself just go, go, go without taking time to rest to um, do some self-care, clearing, checking in with your guides regularly, journaling, um, really uh, map, like not only like mapping out where, where you're gonna go, but uh, what's the word? Document what's been going on and what's been happening and really kind of honor the process. Okay, there we are for our third read. Thank you so much. If you if this was your choice, I appreciate you being here. And we will get on to the next one, which is going to be the diagonal um, read.
Okay, hey there. We're getting started with the first diagonal read. This is the card that starts in that upper left position and we go down to the lower right position. So in that first position, we have the eight of water. The next position, we have the ace of water. And in the third position, we have the two of earth. And what I'm picking up with this is that this is somebody new and dynamic that comes in um, that you're going to be like, wow, this person is exactly what I needed. Whether it's somebody in the flesh, maybe it could even be somebody you already knew or know, but they're like coming in again. Or um, just like at the right time, you're like, oh, you're here again. I missed you. I love you so much. Like that kind of thing. I'm feeling that this could be um, either a friend or a, um, a romantic partner that's really going to help balance you out. Um, and I really do feel like this is more of a either somebody. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of getting two things. This could be somebody that you find online that is either a healer, a teacher, a reader, a seer, somebody like that, that you're like, oh, wow, this person is totally in alignment with the things that I've been thinking and feeling and knowing, whatever, and they're really going to help you um, evolve and open up and things like that. Or this is somebody who is a, somebody from the past who's coming around again, who's maybe been away for a while, um, that you're... Uh, that you knew this could be from a while ago, a few years ago, possibly, that just like uh, maybe nothing really bad happened. There was just kind of, you know, time to separate. You went in one direction, they stayed where they were, or they went in one direction, you stayed where you were, whatever it is. Um, but they're coming back. You're going to get in contact with this person. They're going to get in contact with you. Or you're going to run into them, that sort of thing. Third option here is this is somebody completely new in the flesh that you meet that is going to be on, um, uh, it's just going to really excite you and get you happy, really happy and be like, oh my gosh, this is the person that I've been waiting for. This is the energy that is such a, a good match for me. It's like a key and a lot kind of thing. And with this ace of water coming in with it, it's saying, yeah, this is, this is major new beginnings here. Like I, with either, either of those three scenarios, this is a new start, a new beginning. This is going to feel really good. And don't let, um, don't let fears, don't let the past, don't let anybody coming in to, you know, like put doubts in your head, no matter if they, who, where this, who this person is, um, either, you know, any of those scenarios, don't let you come in or anybody else come in your past, come in to, to try to, you know, brain on the parade sort of thing. You want to stay positive. You want to stay um, trusting and in faith and feel this is also very abundant. This card, this person is like bringing in a shit ton of positive, abundant energy. And they're just going to fill you up with like hope and joy and bliss and gratitude and love and peace and all of these good things. So, and, and the ace of water is saying, you know, ride on my back. I'm a big, beautiful dragon that's here to help you move forward and just go with the flow and, and know the power of love and, and energy that I'm bringing to you. This is, he's holding this in his his hands. He's saying, look at what I'm bringing to you. Oh my God, this is making me emotional. Woo. Um, <laughs> and then we have the eight, uh, sorry, the two of earth. And this is just saying, this is good. The two of earth is like one, two coming together. One, two I'm hearing here and balance, balance both sides of you know, what you feel spiritually and energetically and what you feel physically and to be, you know, um, you know, present, you know, because we can uh, get kind of carried away with, with projecting into the future or, um, you know, kind of jumping in a hundred percent and kind of, 
you know, diving into somebody else and their energy. And just so it's just a, this is just a reminder to say, um, stay in your, in your energy and your power and your love and, and your, your balance, um, here with, with this, um, really feeling heavy with the third eye here, uh, this intuition, just, you know, really don't, don't overthink it. Don't think too hard. It's really what this I, is really what I'm getting with this. Like she's juggling and not even thinking about it. Her third eye is open and she's just like super, super Zen, super. Um, I mean, she's, yeah, she's just, using her energy, her power, her intuition to rise, to make these, um, these eggs rise up. And these eggs are representing more abundance, fertility, creativity, all that kind of stuff. And so, so these, these, this is a really awesome set here because um, there's really nothing, there's nothing negative here. It's all positive. It's all love. It's all about balance, creation, faith. Um, I'm hearing eternity, soulmate, um, uh, kindred spirit, synchronicity, healing, love, abundance, meant to be destiny, faith. All of these words are coming into my mind and it's like, boom kind of thing like you're just gonna know like I've been searching for fill in the blank type of person or I've been waiting hoping that you'd come back or you're the guide I've been you know seeking one of these scenarios is is for you and um I mean even it could be um it could even be all three um in an interesting way um <laughs> it definitely could, but most likely it's one of these scenarios for you. Um, again, either somebody from your past, somebody that you um, come in contact with or learn about online who's going to help you um, in a professional way, or somebody new coming into your world that's going to be more personal, romantic, relationship, you know, interpersonal, intimate on that sort of level. Okay, and remember just faithful and don't don't let your don't let um doubts come in because it's not supposed to here. You're just supposed to just let things flow, accept the gifts that are coming to you because they are and um and be grateful for the abundance, for the timing, for the for this person um showing up right on time and you right on time for them. You know, everything is mutually beneficial. Like even, you know, the people that I heal, the people that I guide, um, it, you know, it is a definitely a mutual ben mutually beneficial, beneficial relationship. It's supposed to be, it's not all, it's our relationships are not supposed to be all take or give. It's supposed to be give and take, give and take, you know, hands, both receiving and giving hands are open up, right? On both sides here. And, um, I mean, all of, if you think about it, yes, I'm being told here, look at hands open, receiving, giving, giving hands, like hands open, giving hands open, giving, receiving. So, you know, as you, as you receive from the ace of water dragon here, he's also receiving your acceptance of his gifts. Um, and the energy coming to you again, I get, whenever I tap in here, I start getting really emotional. Oh my God. This just shows just how real, how intense and how, um, how full of, of magic this is that's coming in. Wow. Okay. Well, there we go. There's our third read or fourth read. I should say, thank you so much for watching this. If this was for you, I appreciate it. And we're going to get on with the next one here. Okay. Now, thank you for joining us for the, uh, the fifth read. This would be the 
the diagonal set going from the top right down to the bottom left. We have the five of fire. Then we have the ace of water. And then we have the three of fire. So what I'm getting with this set here is this like inner conflict. This isn't really so much about, you know, another person. This is more about like, should I move on inner conflict kind of thing? This could, could be from a job, a home, um, something that you're committed to. It could be a person, a relationship, a friendship, um, a, uh, even somebody in your family, but you're, it's kind of like all of the evidence has been shown to you that whatever this is, is not supposed to last or continue much longer. It's really time to, to say goodbye. There's been clues along the way that has shown you yeah, it was meant to be for whatever it was meant to be for, but there's stuff in in this energy that that really causes you to, your frequency to to dip, dip, dip over and over again, and it's because of what goes on in this situation. Again, could be where you live, roommates, just the environment, the, the, just the street corner you live on. It could be the noise. It could be the overall energy. Maybe there's an establishment or a business nearby um, that is just, there's a lot of conflict or something there. This could be with a, like a neighbor or neighbors that moved in or things, you know, got really tumultuous with them. Um, and it's just more about, oh shit, I got to deal with this like like you know it's it's just it's got to be done like you either got to move you got to switch jobs you have to um leave a relationship and and this is just about the inner turmoil that or the inner conflict also that happens when when it's like how do I do it do I do it when do I do it all of these how when which why where you know all of those but our ace of water is saying Look, don't see this as, as, you know, you have the, you have the choice. Like, remember, life is all about choices. So you have the choice to see this any which way you want. To either fight it, resist it, um, procrastinate about it, not deal with it, um, lie to yourself or others about it, or... You can see this as a gift, see this as for what it was, you know, supposed to be and that you want to, um, or you, what really needs to happen is for you to just have faith that this is going to work out, that whatever is going to come to you to help you to move on with this, to inspire you to, to move on is exactly what needs to happen because you're going to go, you're going to move on and you're going to see like, oh, this is so much better. This is so much better. Now that I'm away from this energy, from this turmoil, you know, chaos or whatever this is, um, it was, it needed to be there for whatever reason, this needed to happen. This relationship, this job, this situation, this experience, these people coming or going or whatever needed to happen because it was like a catalyst for you to figure things out, to understand stuff on a different level. Um, so sometimes, you know, something happens where we, um, we have a, a, a situation where we're just like, this is negative and this sucks or somebody does something and it really sets us off in some way. It triggers us, but that trigger could really, you know, be a good thing ultimately. So look at every experience like a gift because this water, this ace of water dragon is coming in to say, this is really a gift. Um, this is really a situation that's going to be part of your transformation and you moving on into a totally new situation direction that's really going to be the catalyst for your destiny, for your future. And there's so much light that's going to come in and where you're going to go from here. So uh, just have faith. 
Don't second guess what's coming into you. Ask your questions of your guides and your guardians to like, you know, is it this? Is it that? If you need to, if you feel um, that seeking, you know, personal advice from, you know, somebody that you trust um, to kind of help you sort things out, you know, some type of mentor, you could do that. But really just know that this situation is meant to, to be finalized that that whatever you feel that may be risky and moving forward is just you know limitations of you know programs of fear that come through when we need to change stuff you're like oh no we got to move we got to change we got to do this work so it's kind of like this is also i'm hearing you know giving you energy giving you love, giving you the the strength to do what you need to do because this is it really needs to be done. It has to be done. Sooner better than later now that we've had our equinox, um now is the time to really plan for this movement, for this change and and use the the energy that's coming in right now because it really is what needs to happen. And to 100% know that whatever this is, you're being told right now, yes, it needs to end. You know, if you've been kind of in denial about this, um, you know, that this is really something that is a situation that absolutely needs to be um, seen with a set of eyes that doesn't romanticize anything, that just sees it for what it is and goes, okay, you know, I'm, I, this is done. Okay, pretty straightforward here. Time to move on from the situation and know that the direction you're going in is going to be a good one. Okay, there we go. Thank you so much for watching this one, for picking this, um, this reading. And we're going to move on to our six, um, six reading, which is our first column down next. Okay, hey there, and thank you for joining me for our sixth reading. This is starting with the top left uh, corner card and going down. So this is our first column with the eight of water, the ace of fire, and the three of fire. So what I'm picking up with this one, this is you. And this is you really getting into, you've been thinking about some, um, I'm really picking up on getting into shape, physical shape, good mental shape, really getting more into meditation, yoga, exercising, um, hiking, biking, swimming, any of this. It's just action, action, action. I'm feeling physical action here. Um, even, you know, meditation is, believe it or not, very physical in nature, especially if you work with your chakras. So um, you could be thinking about, maybe you've done like a meditation or two, maybe you've done mine, but maybe you've done a meditation or two and you're like, wow, that was really amazing and transformative. Um, especially mine. And you're thinking, um, I really need to get more into this and learn more about my energy and my uh, physicality. Uh, this ace of fire is really coming in with energy that says we need to create a new space. It's like the spider in the egg. It's like um, creating a, a new you is what I'm hearing here. And it's like, there's been maybe this time of introspection, maybe even dark night of the soul, or, you know, just really working on things on the inner and being really, you know, kind of doing inventory or whatever. But this is about like more, like whatever you've been doing, we need more of it and we need more movement. Maybe because there has been the, the whatchamacallit, the, uh, um, the pandemic that, you know, there has been more of a stasis, more of a grounding, not really moving kind of a situation. Um, but we really need to think about getting into body, getting into energy more. This is what's coming through here. Uh, but I am feeling really more, if anything, it's physical, even if it's going for walks and, 
one of the things I like to tell people to do to connect to nature, to connect to yourself, to connect, to do, um, to connect to creativity is go on walks and take pictures of things. If you're not usually somebody takes pictures of flowers and plants and trees, um, birds or animal, whatever your scenery, start doing that. Uh, at, you know, when you go out, I just feel this movement, this energy of movement coming for you uh, and the need to create. It's like we have these. So I was just shown here. We have this going on here, the sack. So there's like there's ideas that are going to come, but you need to move in a direction physically, mentally, meditatively. Same thing here. We have an egg here. It's going to hatch. So it's like stuff need stuff will happen, but we need movement first. Um, he is, uh, he is really connected with, uh, like the, what I'm seeing here is it's been kind of more like night, like, like shadow work or nighttime work or, connecting with guides but it's like now it's time to get out into the real world kind of thing um to put the the action into like there's a one of the cards in one of my decks is like balance spirituality and practicality so i kind of feel like like that would be a card that would come up here because it's like we need to get into a sense of being where uh like the, like the inner, like the, the spiritual needs to come in the energy with the physical. Like I, like this is needing to come into, into this and this energy is really intense, but it's may it wants you to, to get out. It's like, almost like I've been really still, I've been contemplative and still I've done research. I've learned a lot. I've explored, I've, um, even, you know, uh, healed on different levels, um, and on an emotional level that tells me what I need to do for my energy and my physicality. And so now is the time to do that. Now is the time to work with the energy. That's what I'm really seeing here. It's like, it's really time to get into the, the physical, the energy and to, and to see where that's going to take you because it is going to take you somewhere new. It is going to take you someplace totally unexpected like maybe you're even somebody who has an ailment has a problem physically maybe you have a chronic condition and maybe you've learned some stuff recently that you're like huh maybe I can change that maybe it's not a forever thing maybe it's not a a um you know god forbid like a death sentence you know a lot of times we get information or we think we know things that that are just maybe not the not the whole picture and once we start to get information to come in from a higher source we will start to understand that we can move in a in a different direction than what was always there before so i'm also seeing that too it's like options are coming open options are coming open for your faith for your movement, for your health, for your energy. And it's up to you to, to decide, okay, where am I going with that? But to have it in, in you from the very beginning that this is about getting you into balance, getting you into a better place physically, emotionally, spiritually, energetically, and where you're going to be um, going forward because you're definitely moving forward here. This is moving forward energy, but it's about taking control. This is about like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. Like maybe this is not something I ever thought I would be into, but I'm totally into it. I feel it. I know it's going to change me. I know it's the direction I need to go in. The only thing that I have to say with this is just to be patient transformation on a physical and energetic level happens in stages it can happen a lot at once trust me that's how I work with my clients a lot happens at once but a lot also happens 
um, gradually and through the process of our evolution and our understanding as we move forward. So just have patience with your journey. That would be the only and last thing I would have to say here. But this is really good. Just lean into your guidance and where you're going to follow this really awesome energy that's leading you forward. Alrighty, thank you so much for joining me on this um, little read here. I appreciate it. Great energy. And we're going to get into the second column and our seventh read. Hey there, and we are getting into our middle column, our second column, our seventh read, seventh of eighth read. So thank you if you picked this read and let's get right into it. We have the six of air the Ace of Water and the Sage in this set. <clears throat> and what I'm picking up with this, and I double checked on it a couple of times, is that there's been some situation where um, you, <clears throat> you learned or you were told something from somebody and it really um, didn't sit well with you. And it created kind of this explosive type energy. Um, and it was just kind of like, like you all, like you did, you just have had a hard time processing whatever this is. Um, and I have a feeling it's about somebody, <coughs> excuse me, somebody else that that you were told um, about or a situation that that was to that somebody told you about or that you went to this person with a situation because you wanted to talk to them about it and what was what their assessment was was not something you wanted to hear even though there's a very good possibility that you were not surprised that they told you what they told you about it. It's like you knew that that's what they were going to say, but it still really bothered you. And it was almost like you got so heated with this and maybe in the moment you were this, it didn't go, it, it was not... It didn't get heated or whatever. Maybe in the moment... Um, as you were discussing this or talking about this um, or learning about this, that it didn't make you upset until later even. And then you start to question yourself, like, what exactly do I feel? What's going on here? You know, that sort of thing. Are they right? Am I wrong? Am I triggered? Am I, you know, are, you know, just a lot of questions coming up about this situation um, or this could even be like somebody came to you for, to talk, or you're a healer, you're some, you're a, a psychic, you're the sage, and, and you thought everything was cool and kosher, and then they came back around later on, it was like, and I hate to be, you know, keep picking up this beautiful water dragon to show discontent or turmoil, but the flip side of unconditional love is fear and aggression and um, violence. And so, you know, this I'm seeing this sage person being like, they really didn't do anything wrong. It's the way that you're processing it. It's the way that you've been triggered by it. It's now the way that you're retelling yourself even what they said so you can be upset about it and rejecting what they say instead of taking to heart really what it is that they told you. It's like shooting the messenger kind of thing. You know, when that happens, when it's like, oh, I want your advice and then you give advice and then they're like, oh, you're an asshole for giving me this advice, you know, or that kind of thing, or, or telling me what you think. Like, I really want your honest opinion. And then you give your honest opinion and you get this kind of reaction. <laughs> or that's what's happened when, you know, it's like, it's either black or white here. 
there's no gray in between like this can this can this card is also saying let's seek balance let's see let's let's not be reactive and really um take a more open and healing approach to this like if i feel pain or fear or anger what do i need to heal versus ah, I need to go after what is making me feel this way, you know, be aggressive about, about it. Like those are, I mean, there's infinite options for how we can deal with anything, but you know, it's like what we're getting here is, is maybe there was a stirring up and you just, you know, decided to go with that or, or it's something to this effect. So, okay. So that's the scenario that I have here, that there was some information that came through that, um, that really did not go over well and, or really triggered, triggered, um, emotions, a situation, a confrontation with somebody, or, or it was a confrontation that happened. And then, you know, you're trying to figure that out. And, you know, do you talk to others? Do you go to other people for advice? Or, you know, who should you see about this? You know, it, are you in the wrong? Did, you know, there's just so many questions here. So let's go to this ace of water and and this ace this dragon ace of water is really saying what needs to happen is you need to take a step back and you need to think about the facts not what you think not what you feel but the facts what exactly actually happened and let's just look at that for what it is what happened, what happened, what happened. So what you, what you know that happened and you, what you, and so instead of, you know, implications or putting anything else into the situation, uh, just the facts, ma'am, <laughs> that's what we want. We want just the facts. We want just the facts. It's like one of those things, like, let's not get into all of the different, you know, nuances and other details of this situation. We want just the facts between the two people that are in play here or the two main characters in play here, you and this other person, no matter who, you know, which one of these players you are. And let's just see the facts. And as the sage, the seer, the healer, the mystic, the um the psychic the reader however you want to put this person here um you and that person did not do anything wrong except for what is expected of them they were honest they were truthful they were guides and or healer and in, in the way that they are meant to be for you or or for them or or <laughs> however you want, this goes um and, and it's so, so if you're this person, then you need to just let that go. And however that this person came at you about it or, or, or whatever this was about the situation, it is truly better that you stopped engaging. Or if this is something that hasn't happened just yet, just remember this and remember that, You'll, you know, there probably will be a certain amount of engagement needed by you to, to, you know, do you, um, authentically, but then when it's time to end, to end it, to end it, however, however way you're guided to do that. So, <coughs> and for this person here, for the person who, you know, had been triggered or, reacted or attacked or, you know, twisted things around or whatever it was, or can't quite, you know, deal with the new information. Um, it's about, um, taking a step back, seeing things for, you know, again, what are the facts and, you know, everybody makes 
mistakes. Everybody gets triggered in certain ways. And, and a lot of times in this reality, we see things like it, it has to be now. We need to, de we need to react now. We need to deal with it now. And one thing I can say in my, um, in what's come to me through my connections with all the divine beings that I work with, um, from Mother Gaia to Ascended Masters, from Jesus to the Marys to all the Archangels, um, the the different uh, either personal guides or collective of of beings that we can work with, Galactics or Fae, the Animal Kingdom. I mean, I can just sit here and go kind of on and on about all the different ways in which we and I connect and get information. But one thing I can tell you um, that is kind of a universal message from everyone at one point or another that I've connected to on all of those different, in all those different groups is patience is key and is the hardest thing a lot of the times to 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 practice for ourselves and for others it feels like we have to move very quickly that we need to communicate things quickly we need to talk quickly we need to go quickly and all that stuff and there is a time and a place for that but there's also a time and a place for not for contemplation, for silence, for stillness, for patience in, in what we're, in what's going on. And so, so we may need to, you know, the lesson may be, you know, maybe next time not react so quickly, not, um, not respond until you've had time to process and instead of looking outwards for why you're feeling the way that you are, look inwards for thinking, for feeling the way that you're feeling and, um, and try to understand that whatever this was, was not meant in harm, was not meant to hurt you, was not meant to deter you, was not, you know, putting anything off on you that wasn't, you know, exactly what you needed to hear or process or whatever the case is. So it's just about your processing of it, your assimilation, your reaction. So again, you know, this could be one of those situations where you really need to take a step back, be patient with yourself in the process, stop looking outside for the answers and and just allow for things to settle so you can see things and, and see if there's a pattern. I'm also feeling that there this might be a pattern that um, maybe it's just, it looks different, but a lot, but it could have a lot of the same, um, this experience could have a lot of the same type of similar details, even if it may look really different. So to take some time to, to, to really, you know, you have to put your big boy or big girl pants on and really get real and really decide to, um, be honest with yourself about the situation. So, so you can really truly learn from it and move on and, and understand what happened and how it happened and, what you need to do about it. And if this isn't, a, a, I'm hearing, if this isn't a current, if you pick this reading and this isn't a current situation or something that happened recently, maybe this is something that happened a while ago, um, but it's something that repeats in different ways and, and you really need to see it from, you know, the beginning. Because um, <clears throat> there is a theme, I'm hearing there is a theme. Okay, thank you so much for watching and picking this reading. I appreciate it. We're going to get into our very last read, our eighth and final read coming up next. Okay, our last and final read, our eighth read. And this one's pretty interesting. We have the Five of Fire, the Mother, and Two of Earth. So... What I got this time around for this read is 
uh, or this card is more like, <laughs> this is about intimacy, sexuality, sexual desire, um, what your preconceived ideas are of what's acceptable and what's not, how far you'll go and what's, you know, what's taboo. Uh, the mother, <laughs> uh, is saying, this is Gaia coming in and she's saying, this is actually something that has been a theme for you in your different lifetimes. And there's been kind of one form of repression or another. This is on a cellular quantum level that there's some type of repression here, or it's either been one way or another, but for the most part, it's been some type of repression. And when I say one way or another, I'm feeling this could be like, there's a couple of lifetimes where you were like fully all into your, um, to your kinks and whatever, you know, or your sexual orientation. If it was, you know, if you were, um, what we're still considering to be, you know, uh, society is still, you know, figuring out that sex is sex and sexual energy is fluid. Um, and that, but, but the humans have been conditioned to see things a certain way. But anyway, I am feeling like in your past lifetimes that you have experienced, you know, homosexual, uh, relations and love. And, you know, those are two different things that a lot of people, you know, don't really quite understand. Some people, um, get it are really physically attracted to the same sex, but they're really not into uh, or don't feel romance and romantic in love type feelings, but they are into, but it's more, you know, totally physical. But then there's people who really, you know, they, they will feel um, that deeper connection. And I really think that this is more about that. It's really more about feeling a spiritual, feeling like I'm a lot more um, sexually fluid than I thought I was. And again, Gaia coming in to say, yeah, this is definitely a theme for you to figure out in your lifetimes. And um, uh, I lost my other card. <laughs> where oh here she is sorry got confused um and the and the two of earth is ta is talking about balance here it's it's about balancing this out like maybe this is coming to a head like maybe this has been something that you've repressed and um or maybe you've had experiences when you were younger, like really young. Um, and those memories are coming back and they're exciting you. They're turning you on. Or maybe you, um, and you're single and you're like, whoa, I'm starting to have like sexual feelings for the same sex or, um, and, and you could be in a relationship with somebody, like a heterosexual relationship with somebody. Conversely, you could be in a gay relationship with somebody um, and you can start to have heterosexual feelings um, and heterosexual fantasies. Like if you're a gay guy, you can start having sexual fantasies about, uh, about being with women. If you're a lesbian, you can start having sexual fantasies about being with men. Because this, because your story is meant to unfold, to unravel the, uh, the container of sexual energy. That's not this or that it's, it's both. <laughs> so as you see here, we have two men and we have two women. And that's also being pointed out to me here that we have two men and two women and that this combination can go any which way. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And there's also, of course, trans, but you know, once they're trans, they are what they are. So again, that this combination can go any which way and that um, it's really time to come into balance. Like you're being asked and you took on this, this um, story in this lifetime, um, continuing to help work out these um, these energies for the collective and for your own soul story, for your own um, divine union in this lifetime. And Mother Gaia coming in to say, you know, you, you have never lived in a period where, um, yeah, where she's saying, well, let me finish this. <clears throat> she's talking fast. You've never lived in a period where it's so acceptable, even though it, there still is a lot of work to be done, but that's also why you're part of this group. Why you're part of this group that isn't straight, <clears throat> no pun intended, straightforward when it comes to sex and, and, um, and even going beyond that to, to, aside from sexual orientation, just what you like within that, what your desires are, what your predilections are, what your kinks are, what your fantasies are, um, and to be open about that. So this is the next thing about this, Reed, is that um, within this dynamic of changing your, or, or you, or maybe you've known, and I've been gay or lesbian my whole life maybe that's not something new or maybe maybe it's it's always been that but even within that maybe you've kept a tight wrap on how far you're, you'll go um this is about opening up to the possible to really um getting into balance the authentic you on a sexual level on a sexual orientation level um this is also about healing from past um, romantic love, um, uh, sexual encounters or abuses, maybe relationships that were one-sided and weren't, um, or maybe they were narcissistic in, 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 uh, in nature and, uh, or just very one-sided as far as the sex went. Maybe there was, you were with somebody who was just really like straightforward as far as what, you know, like you couldn't even really talk to them about what you wanted to do or you would never even think about it. Like maybe it's like even thinking or t talking about masturbation was just like, no. Um, so there's that part of it too. So it's also healing from situations, relationships, cutting cords. So I feel like there's still like no matter who, like even if you, the, you could, this could be a, you know, I mean, I really feel like this is a sexual orientation thing too. And, and also just an authentic sex type thing. Like, what are you really into? And it being able to share that, like if you like, truly being in a relationship with yourself and anybody else and not being open sexually about what makes you tick, what you like, if you can't verbalize it, because you're shy, you're ashamed, you feel you'll be judged, you don't want, you feel vulnerable, you, the, you're with somebody who wouldn't understand. Like these are all, you know, clues and reasons to, to, to think about what needs to be changed. And to understand that, you know, unless you're into hurting yourself on a, you know, real serious level, you know, or, and, or doing something with somebody that is not consensual or threatening or whatever, that those things, you know, anything beyond that, um, is it, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just your idea of what's acceptable. And another thing I'll tell you too, that I'm picking up with this is the idea that, you know, what you're into or how you are is something other and somebody else won't be into, or you won't be able to find that type of thing and situation. Now, let me tell you, you're wrong. Um, you're definitely wrong. I, 
once upon a time used to do phone, what is traditionally known as phone sex or phone, like a phone therapy, phone sex therapy. Um, and I've heard it all, trust me. And 99%, 99.99% of the people who called me was like, oh, I'm so different in what I like. I'm never going to find anybody, this, that, and the other thing. They were wrong. I'm like, uh, no, there's definitely somebody out there for you. Um, everybody thinks that they're like so different in the crazy shit that they like and what turns them on. And the truth is, is that it's just, it, it's not like that, 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 you know, if you're into it, if it turns you on, I guarantee you that there's somebody that, that, or there's multiple people that are into those same things that, and you'll find them. One of the things that I used, that I did towards the end of me doing that job um, was to really help people manifest the, the encounters or the people that they wanted in their life. And time and time again, they would call me back and they would say, oh my God, you won't believe it. I found this person. You were right. I did this. I did this. I did this. And now I'm in this relationship or I found this person or these people or whatever the case was that they were into. And it was, it was there for them. They just had to, to first get out of their own way that it was not, not something that was okay. And secondly, that it's something that they couldn't have or that, that nobody else was into that too, or whatever it was. And like I said, all, every single time they were wrong and every single time they got what they wanted, if they followed, you know, the, the, the plan of, of being authentic about what it is that they, that they desired. Um, so anyway, I'm just, I'm sharing that because, because this is a real thing. And, and with the divine masculine, with the divine feminine coming into balance within people, that is also something, um, that I would get a lot of is a lot of heterosexual men calling me up going, I'm have a lot of sexual feelings for, you know, men now. And I'm thinking about, blowjobs and sex and this and that and that I hadn't before or in a really long time since I was super super young and it's because the energy of the collective needs to be in balance and sex is and sexual desire and sexual it just your sex how you are sexually through your lifetime is meant to change that's meant to evolve and a lot of people think it's just it is one thing and it never changes and it doesn't evolve and but especially now with porn and stuff, there's just a lot of a lot of that energy that gets really convoluted and it kind of even turns ambiguous because everything is just, there's just so much of it and it can be confusing. So this is also about balancing out that energy if you're somebody who's been heavy into porn um, to try to really see sex as more of a intimate, sacred um, type energy. And to really want to get that into balance, um, it is to number one, um, not masturbate so much, not to release orgasm energy so much, let the body get in balance with that energy by not releasing it all the time. That might sound really crazy and hard to do, but trust me, it's possible. You just have to be in control of that. First things first is to get away from porn because that that energy, a lot of it is very negative. Um, the people who are doing it aren't in the best situations. It's not something you're going to hear about very often. But, um, you know, sex energy is the most potent energy um, in in the world, in, in our creation here is... Uh, that's what creates life, right? Even the mother, she's pregnant. Um, and so she's, it's saying, you know, think about how precious that energy is and what that's meant for. And I'm not saying that we're not meant to have sex for fun, because trust me, I know we are. But what I'm saying is to maybe get yourself out of, you know, because a lot of people, you know, get really into, into, you know, kind of addicted to porn and masturbating and think that they need to do it all the time. And it's really much better for you to internalize that energy and not expel 
that energy as much as possible and then just do it when you're really guided to when you need to release um energy um that sort of thing like more on a spiritual level energetic level than an animalistic lower frequency type level and that would be let me check in here yep that would be it with this one well thank you so much that one was pretty intense <laughs> to end this with but there we go um thank you for listening to this reading it was really cool very impromptu um i really really enjoyed this um doing these eight readings so whichever one or ones that you picked i hope that they spoke to you and that your spring and your equinox is beautiful and whenever it is that you watch these um timeless forever and always readings that they um, are helpful to you in one and many ways. And thanks again for being here. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment if you're so guided. And I will see you soon. Bye for now, guys.